G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we have an intermittent wiring fault on a Kawasaki GPZ 1984 model. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out. I've had this apart and diagnosed it so I know what it is but I just wanted to take you guys along for the ride. So what's actually wrong with it? So let's turn on the ignition and see what's going on. The neutral light should come on there but we don't see it coming on at all for now. There we go, can you see that? It's come on, you probably can't see it. Hopefully it comes back into range, can you see that there? And of course you're saying to yourself, well Max come on, it's not that difficult, all it is is the uh, broken wire in the headstock and you're probably right but what makes it interesting is the next step i've now pulled out the ignition switch assembly and of course my little fascia here with my light on it and all sorts of stuff just so i've got access to it you can probably see over here where i've done repairs before where some wires actually broke and of course that gave me the direction to head because i figured yeah it's just broken another wire but hey look they look all okay to me um, in actual fact, I went to the extent because these little pins here going onto the back of the ignition switch were quite loose. So I've soldered them solid so I know that I have good continuity there. One important test to do when you're actually looking for electrical faults, particularly intermittent ones, is what's called a wiggle test. Now if we turn on our ignition there, you can see we've got nothing happening with our neutral light there. But let's just see if we can get that light to come back on. There we go. You can see that there. Um, so one of the things that you need to do is not just look for broken wires but actually stretch them and wiggle them as the test suggests, a wiggle test. So that yellow one looks like, uh, no it doesn't, all right, so, oh there you go, is it the yellow one? Well no, that appears okay, I've got good contact on here, plus I'm stretching it and bending it, let's have a look at the blue one, bending it, stretching it, wiggling it, it's all good. Red one, whoops, that went off and on there. Red one, stretching it, okay, no. How about that brown one that I've repaired previously? Uh, that looks okay as well. This white one surely is okay, nothing wrong with that. It looks good, no problems there. But notice what happens when I just stretch the wire itself. See that? What a pain in the neck that is, hey. There's actually a little tiny break inside the wiring here and I can get it to contact and pull apart whenever I want just by stretching the wire backwards and forwards like that. And if I stretch it far enough, you can see uh, that it's getting thin right here. If I were to cut that right there, just through the plastic, I can feel it with my fingernail right now. In actual fact, that's where the break is. You can see that little dent there? Let's just split that open. Let's have a look if we can get that light to come back on. There we go. You see that? So that's where the break is, right there, even though we can't physically see that it's a broken wire. But we can see our light coming off and on the dash, can't we? Bit of a tricksy one, that fella. Ah, oh, tricksy! So I'll just cut that there and show you guys where the break is. But I can physically see. See the little bend I've got in it now? So I can actually see where the wire is broken, but the plastic remains. It's, uh, it messes with your head, that one moment of truth. Let's have a look and see if I can find exactly where it is. Oh, I can feel it right there. Look at that. Hey, okay. Let's just put a nick in that and see if we can actually pull it apart without actually cutting through the wire. Let's just cut through the plastic and see what we find. Just cut through the plastic and look at that. Hey presto, she's broken mate. Problem solved. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, solder this together. I know you're saying why solder? Solder is brittle etc but this is close to the ignition switch and I'm hoping if I support it uh, maybe I'll put some conduit around it as well and that in turn will give it the support that it needs to hold it in place in the future. I've now got the ignition switch on the bench as you can see. If you have a close look at it you can see that the wires themselves, the strands, are cut in different lengths aren't they? You can see there's some long ones here, a little bit shorter, and way back here are some shorter ones. That's typical of wires that have been stretched like this, and eventually they break. That's what's happened in this case. So rather than wrapping the wire around itself, which in turn would shorten the length of the wire, I'm just going to reinforce it with some other wire between the break, and then put some heat shrink over the top of it, which I've already got in place here. 
So I'll do that next. As stated, all I'm gonna do is use the strands from a piece of wire and wrap it around here and then join it onto this one. So this acts like a little bridge. But you may notice that I've left part of the plastic on there. Why is that? Well, hell, it's a lot easier to hang on to it and when you don't lose all your strands, I can cut this off later on, can't I? I just cut these lengths a little bit longer because I wasn't getting enough twisting of the wire around there and it didn't want to sit in place. So we'll just have another shot, see how we go this time. Nice. There we go. It should mechanically hold there. In other words, it shouldn't just fall off all the time. Soldering holds it in place. You need to have a good mechanical connection. You've got to have it held in place. That's why I like to twist the wires rather than flay them into one another as some people do. I'm just gonna use some flux on it so that uh, we have a good bond there. It's okay, you won't feel a thing. See, that didn't hurt. Get some heat into it. Put those two ends together and just use this as a bridge wire. Which is always easier said than done, hey? Anyway, we get him around there, flatten him out as much as you possibly can, twist the other one into it, and as you can see, I haven't sacrificed any of the wire length, which is what I was concerned about. Let's not forget the heat shrink. So let's hook up the connector and see if we've fixed it. The ignition switch is now connected and as you can see, a little light is on. Let's give it a bit of grief here and see what happens. There's no issue there, no issue there. Bit of grief, bang it around, wiggle test, wiggle test, pull, pull, pull. No problems. I think we've got it sorted, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. That was a tricksy one, wasn't it? All right, I'm gonna put it all back together, but I might put some conduit around this wiring here just to strengthen it as it bends backwards and forwards as a result of the headstock being turned. Add some tape to give it extra strength. Add some conduit to give it extra support. that up so it looks professional and finally reassemble it of course before you nail everything back together for the final time make sure you give it a bit of grief keep an eye on that green light there the neutral light and she's all honky-dory no problemo now I can confidently put it all back together and take it for its road test and now for the funnest part of the repair, the road test. You know, intermittent faults can be the hardest ones to find, but in this case, we got it sorted. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today and that you've learned something that will help you in your electrical repairs in the future. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below that notification bell, give it a dong so that you don't miss any future videos. So until next time guys, this is Miracle Max, I'll catch you later.